So this is being recorded. So if you'd like a copy of this um, afterwards, just give me an email and I can send you the link to that. And a lot of good questions in the chat, so we'll get to those as we go. Uh, one of them, though, that we can answer right away is from Muriel. Is this series every Tuesday? First question, and do we need to register every time? Um, obviously, this is my first. Thank you for the invitation. Happy to join you. So Muriel, the answer is, so far, it's been every other Tuesday. I think at some point, my brain is going to be empty, and I won't have enough information to give you every other Tuesday. But for now, it's been every other Tuesday. And they are different links each time. So yes, you do have to register each time. So I send out the links to my email list. And then I think our Master Gardener coordinator here sends it out. Some other people send it out as well. But if you need to know about it each time, it's best to get on my email list. OK. So welcome to Tropical Fruit Tuesdays. My name is Jeff Wasilewski. I'm the Commercial Tropical Fruit Extension Agent for Miami-Dade County. University of Florida has an extension office in each county, and I work in Miami-Dade County down in Homestead where the commercial growers are. And today we're gonna to talk about growing the jackfruit. And in two weeks, we're gonna talk about fruit trees with attitude. So what that basically is, is fruit trees that have some sort of issues. So like, for instance, avocado, you have laurel wilt, that's a big problem. Um, lychees, you have, they need a certain amount of cold to get to bloom. And they also now have a really bad pest called the lychee arenos mite. So those two would fit under that, trees with attitude. Uh, then October 27th, we're going to talk about properly growing carambolas. So it'll be similar to today, but instead of jackfruit, carambolas. And November 10th, fertilizing tropical fruit. I'm sure that will be a popular topic. We, we always talk about it each crop, but I'll go into it a little more in depth that day. Okay, so we're talking about the jackfruit, Artocarpus heterophyllus quite the large fruit. It's the largest tree-borne fruit in the world. And it's related to many other plants. It's related to the meringue. It's related to breadfruit. It's related to ficus. Uh, it's related to, what else? I have a list here. Mulberries, champadec and Kwai Muk. So it's related to many different things. Breadfruit, when I was doing my research, uh, this fruit was the reason behind Captain Bly's voyage to Tahiti and the mutiny on the bounty. So that's pretty cool. Um, so it is the largest tree-borne fruit. It is in the fig family. It's been in the literature since about 100 AD. It does have some salt tolerance. It has low drought and flood tolerance. So it does need to get irrigated if it's gonna be very dry. It can't take a lot of water. Uh, the mature fruit, here's a question that I think we got a couple times already in the chat. So when do you know when it's ready to pick? Obviously, if you wait till it has an odor, it's very ripe and you're, you might even have it fall apart in your hand when you cut it off the tree. So you need to be scouting your trees, looking at them, watching, and you can go up and thump them. If they have a dull, hollow sound, that means they're getting close to ready. Uh, the spines on the jackfruit will sort of flatten out, and the, the fruit itself will turn a little darker. If it's very bright, uh, if it's very green, it'll turn more yellow. If it's very yellow, it'll turn a little brown. Like there's a, a seedling jackfruit we have here at Extension. And I know when I see those fruit turn a little brown, then they're mature and I can cut them off. Um, they're ready from May to October, depending on the cultivar or what seedling you have. And when you do harvest them, they're full of latex. So you need to cut them and then lay them under the tree and let the latex come out. 
um, that's probably the best way to do it, then come back and get the fruit later once the latex has come out. Otherwise, it's gonna get all over the fruit, it's gonna get all over your hands. So let me take a look at the questions and see what we have so far. Um, Katie asked a few questions. One is when and how much should we be trimming back the trees? I'll talk about pruning a little bit, but you never want to take more than really a third or a quarter of the tree off. So you're looking to do height control and a little width control. Um, best fertilizer, we'll talk about that. Oh, and then Katie also has when to prune. Uh, usually you prune after you take off the, the fruit, but that doesn't have to be that important with jackfruit because the flowers are coming on the trunk. So if you're pruning just the, the, the branches, you're not really affecting the flowering. So I would do my pruning like coming out of the spring so it has time to regrow. And third question from Katie, how do you tell when to harvest? Uh, are all varieties harvested at the same interval? So that was what I talked about with the dull hollow sound. When you thump them, the spines flatten, they turn a little darker. And all varieties are not harvested at the same interval. So thank you for those questions. Katie, Matthew has a question. Typically, how old should your rootstock be? And I know that Jorge answered this a little bit, but if we're talking about age, I would say about a little under a year and about the width of a pencil is probably best. Uh, so Jorge, there's his answer. Yvonne asked a question which was answered by Dr. Green and Jorge, which I didn't know the answer to. Uh, Yvonne asked, at what stage do you pick them green for jackfruit pulled pork. So jackfruit is very popular right now as a vegan sort of pork substitute. So Yvonne is saying it's not good with ripe fruit. So if you wait till the fruit is ripe, you can't use it really as a vegan substitute. It doesn't work as well as to get the pork texture. So Dr. Green has answered, if growing from, oh no, that's a different, um, question. I'll get to that, Dr. Green. But Dr. Green answered, uh, green fruit for pulled pork is about a three pound fruit for most varieties. Once the fruit has a significant odor on the tree, it's too ripe. And Jorge says, Yvonne, you're essentially looking to use the fruit as a vegetable. So look to pick them more green than ripe. Okay, so thank you guys for those answers. Dr. Green had a question. If growing from seed, um, does the variety come true? They come pretty true. They don't come exactly true, but they're pretty close. So growing from seed is not a bad way to go. And Dr. Green, you say that's not for you. It's gonna be for your grandchildren, but if you grow them a little quicker, uh, you can get it in about four years. If you're lucky, you can get a fruit. So um, I know you're still gonna be on my uh, advisory committee at that point, so I would go for it. Um, let's see, Muriel, uh, we answered Muriel's question. Matthew had another question. Other than the fruit and spice park, do you have thoughts on where to source high quality scion material? Scion is the budwood that you would use to graft. So other than fruit and spice park, which I think is a good place, I think they would allow you to do that. I think Trek would be another place if you get permission. And um, Fairchild Farm has a lot of good cultivars. And I'm going to stop for the moment and come back to this. Oh, Crystal has a question. What is latex? Uh, latex is what comes out of these fruit. And really all of the, if you've ever cut a ficus tree, that white milky substance that's really sticky that comes out. When I say latex, that's what I'm talking about. So um, jackfruit have that very much so. Okay, so here's what they look like inside. And this is the big jackfruit. It has the center area that you don't eat. That's called uh, the rag. And then it has these bulbs that we see here. 
inside each one of these bulbs is a seed. The seeds are edible too if you, I think you have to, to um, bake them or smoke them. Um, but the, the flesh is here. The flesh can be very firm or it can be very soft depending on what you like and what cultivar you're, you're going to have. Um, and here, when you go and you open up a jackfruit, so you're going to take a knife and you're going to do this. You're going to cut it so you can get inside. Remember, all this white is full of latex. So it's got a lot of latex. So when you, um, when you open it up, what you should do is coat your hands in vegetable oil and coat your knife in vegetable oil. And then use that to get into the latex and that will really um, help you a lot to not get your tools and your hands so sticky. Okay, so right here, put a lot of vegetable oil on your hands, on your knife, then you can get in there a little easier. So, Here's sort of what um, I think it was Yvonne who was asking about the pulled pork action. So um, this is kind of jackfruit in that. And then you have, I think here, here's the seeds that are being eaten. And these pictures are courtesy of Dr. Maurice Ledesma. So we're gonna get into real quick, the Fairchild breeding program which was initiated in 1995, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick peek at your questions again so I don't get too far behind there. Um, Wade says, this is my first tree produced. The first year my tree produced, three small jackfruit. At first all perished, then two larger ones grew to about half size. Both of these did not make it either. Uh, one insects enjoyed and the other looked like a critter dined on. How do I keep my fruit safe? Usually when the fruit are small, they're pretty safe. So I'm not sure what you have going on there that a critter got it. Usually they're not getting attacked when they're small. I haven't really seen that. Um, so not sure what to tell you. You can try bagging them. You would need a pretty big bag, but that, that would probably work. Um, and then Jorge has more information on scions, budwood. Crystal asked about latex. Oh, Steve has a good answer to latex. So take a look at that in the chat. Um, Yvonne talked about vegetable oil, which I mentioned. Paulette says some varieties have only a little latex, which is true, so that helps a lot. Um, Tim says, at my house, we boil the seeds, eat them with a little salt. They're similar to chestnuts. Okay, and okay, and then Paulette says, remember the first one or two years, you only get male flowers, which resemble dead upside down rats. So I'm gonna talk about that because that's a good point, Paulette. All right, so I'm caught up in the chat. So the Fairchild breeding program was trying to create new varieties of jackfruit. And I was actually a part of that. I did a lot of the hand pollination. So here's all the different varieties that were crossed. So black gold, cochin, all these different varieties were crossed, 17 different crosses. And what, what we did was we grew them out as seedlings and then we plant them all at the USDA at Chapman Field. And then Richard Campbell and Norisa Desma selected ones that were good to great. And they came up with this one, which was a cross of Dang Rasmi and Gold Nugget, which you see there in her right hand, the little small one. That's called Fairchild First. And you the tree is upright, <clears throat> excuse me, medium vigor, can be easily maintained, so it's a smaller tree. Um, the fruit are small and smooth in comparison with other cultivars. Because the spines flatten and open as the fruit matures, they're small, and the fruit can be eaten, including the rag, so you can eat everything inside. The flesh is firm and mild with little latex. So that was one. Another one was poppy, which you see here. 
these nice big bulbs that look like they will come off real easy. So that was black gold by honey gold. And uh, the fruit can be eaten, including the rag. The fruit are small, irregular shapes, smooth, and spines flattened and open as the fruit matures. Uh, they also had sweet fair child, with it, which was a seedling of tabui. The tree was upright, vigorous, and growth can be maintained at a height of three and a half meters. Fruiting is heavy and consistent. Fruit are large, well, about 18 pounds. The color is light green to yellow. Flesh is light yellow, firm, mild, sweet flavor. That's how I like them. I like them firm. Some people like them soft. I, I don't prefer that, but it's really up to you. And the flavor is appealing to those that prefer a milder jackfruit. Now we're getting into a few cultivars. We're not going to do them all. We're just going to do a couple. Um, black gold, vigorous, annual pruning. The tree is easily maintained. So you can prune these trees. I recommend pruning these trees. Um, they're a joy to prune because the, the wood is very soft. So they're very easy to cut. Um, the fruit have dark green skin, flesh deep orange, no fiber, good flavor. Semi-soft, so this is one that's not as firm. And the flesh is easily removed from the fruit compared to other cultivars. Uh, Dang Rasami, which you see here. Uh, and this was what a Dang Rasami that was hand pollinated. So that's why it's so big. See this little tag here, that was one that was one of the, the seeds would be one of the crosses. Um, fruit are large, flesh is deep orange, good flavor, crunchy has mild sweet flavor, sweet pleasant aroma. It's one of the most vigorous jackfruit cultivars and must be annually pruned to maintain size. Golden nugget, small, green, and rounded with sharp fleshy spines. Spines flatten to a smooth golden yellow upon maturity. The fruit is uh, deep orange flesh. Good flavor, crunchy, um, flesh has no fiber. Golden nugget will often split, so that's sort of a negative. But that's when there's heavy rains. And that happens to a lot of fruit where you have the fruit, they kind of get to size, they're sitting there, then you get a lot of rain, uh, and then it sort of pops open. J31, moderately vigorous. Fruit are large, irregular, with prominent bunts, blunt splines, excuse me. Uh, 12 kilograms, flesh, deep orange, good flavor, crunchy, flavor, sweet, rich, strong, earthy aroma. And it sometimes will produce off-season fruit during the fall and winter. Okay, before we get into sort of these basic concepts of the jackfruit, I did want to um, tell you that a good way for you to get information is EDIS documents. EDIS, so if you Google EDIS space UF for University of Florida, space, and then you put jackfruit. Uh, so EDIS space UF space jackfruit, if you search that, you'll find jackfruit growing in the Florida home landscape, which is this right here. And EDIS is the University of Florida database. So it's a really good place to get information. And what you'll find in a lot of these EDIS publications is, um, so it has scientific names, synonyms, family, relatives, the origin, distribution, description of the leaves, climate, stress, factors, propagation, production, spacing, uh, planting, weed control, insects, irrigation, diseases, pruning, mulch. So you have all this great information. Uh, harvest, ripening, storage, and uses and nutritional value. And then in the back, there's always these really good um, tables. So the first one is characteristics of jackfruit varieties. So it has the cultivar, and it looks like there's about um, maybe 25 different cultivars here. So it has cultivar, growth habit, fruit size and weight, fruit shape, yield per tree, season and months, 
Some of them have photos, not many, and then has comments. So good information, always there available for you online. You can download it as a PDF, so you can keep it yourself. And then there's another two charts. One of them is the cultural calendar. So usually we have these for all the different tropical fruit. So it tells you when to fertilize, when to do nutri nutritional sprays, when to use iron, when to water, when to do insect control, disease control, and when to prune. And the final chart, or the final two charts, is there's one, the fertilizer recommendations. So it tells you each year from year one to eight, how many times per year you're gonna fertilize, how much you're gonna fertilize, and then find, and what you're gonna fertilize with. And then finally, there's a table that has a nutrient value. So lots of great information um, there. So I definitely recommend you looking at those. So for jackfruit, and I talk about this a lot, they need full sun. Your tr fruit trees need full sun, so they need to be in the sun. So if you have one planted on the north side of your house or on the north side of a bigger tree, it's gonna be getting shaded all the time. So that's not good. So you wanna, when if you're gonna plant any fruit tree, make sure it's getting full sun. Here's a jackfruit uh, that I went to, a commercial grower. He was growing his trees from seed, so he grew them from seed, then he put them in the ground. Some of the trees that he had were looking great, no problem. Um, but this one, he was having all kinds of problems with. You see it's yellow, it's stunted. So we see a couple things. One was he planted it too deep. He planted it too deep, so the stem was underground. Another thing you see here is this black soil with really no drainage. So here's the native soil out here, this rocky soil, and then he added this black sort of muck. So that caused it to have sort of a container effect and it would hold water too much and then it's too deep. So that's what made this tree go downhill. Okay, you wanna protect your plants. This is a jackfruit that I planted um, at extension, this was actually the first fruit tree I planted here. And you see it has a ring around it of mulch. It also has a little plastic down at the base to keep it protected from weed whackers. Instead of a ring of mulch, you can just keep the weeds away, just about a foot and a half out, just take everything out so the weed whackers don't get in there. Um, Here's what happens if you don't protect your trees. This was an actually a commercial grow I went to. It's an avocado tree and it was weed whacked. You can see very much. And this outside area here, this bark is also called um, the phloem. So things from the top of the tree, the energy the tree makes go down the tree in the phloem, so if you cut that, you're really starving your tree. And this is actually the tree was pulled out of the ground, laid on the ground, we're looking at it from above. And what you can see here is, here's the level it was planted at, and you have these big flare roots coming out. So this was planted at the right level. If we would have seen, oops, sorry. If we would have seen the soil level up here and the flare roots down here, then we would know that this is planted too deep, but it was planted at the right level, but it died because it got weed whacked so badly. Okay, Paulette mentioned the flowers of the jackfruit and the male flowers and the female flowers. So you do have separate flowers on the same tree. Usually with like a mango avocado, the flowers are both male and female. Um, but with jackfruit, you have one male flower and one female flower and or, well, multiple male flowers, multiple female flowers, but they are separate, they're not together. So this is a male, you can see it's very smooth. And what will come out of here is yellow pollen when it's ready. Here's a female, you can see it's more bumpy. It looks like a small fruit. 
And one issue that people get is when their trees are young or they're not strong enough to produce fruit, they'll just produce male fruit or male flowers. And the male flowers, you can see, they can fool you. They look like little fruit. So what, what happens is, is they go like this, they turn black. Paulette said it looks like a dead rat upside down. Uh, so here's what happens. So people think they had fruit and the fruit perished, but really it was just the male flowers and they're not uh, ready yet to produce fruit. They're too small. And that tree that I planted, this one, this, it was a little smaller than this when I planted it. I planted it when I first got here, so that was seven years ago. It's only fruited once. It's only had one fruit, and it was sold as a black gold, so it should have been vegetatively propagated, but I think it was a seedling of a black gold. Uh, that's why it's taking so long to produce fruit. Okay, so Katie asked some questions about proper nutrition. Uh, I just do wanna mention water as well. I said that they don't do well with drought. So certainly this time of year, they're fine because we're getting lots of rain. But I would say in the early spring, when it's very warm, but we're not getting rain, so around March and April, I would say it would be a good time to irrigate your jackfruit. If you just have one tree, you don't have an irrigation system, just bring a hose out there, let it go for a little while, and um, you'll be fine. Matthew has a question. What is the outlook for commercial production viability in South Florida? I would say it's difficult, Matthew, for commercial production because if you've been to grocery stores lately, you see that they do are selling jackfruit there, but if you look at where it came from, it's almost always Mexico. These jackfruit right here in this picture are all from Mexico. So they're producing a lot. So that's sort of flooding the market, which makes it difficult for us. Um, I know that like Dr. or Richard Lyons, who's on this um, webinar, he grows jackfruit and he will sell the fruit green, so he has people come and pick it and, and right off the tree and they, he sells it that way. So he's pretty good uh, with that, but it's difficult. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, Matthew. And Joy says, would it be more ideal to remove the small male? I wouldn't because you never know. Sometimes the males come out first and then the females. So you don't know that it's going to just be all males. Uh, so I would leave it. They don't take that much energy from the trees, so it, it, I wouldn't worry about it. And they're usually the trees are pretty big when they start to flower, so I wouldn't worry about it. So Katie, you ask about what's a good fertilizer. I like an 839. This is a good general fruit tree special. Um, and these numbers, you'll find them on all fertilizer bags. They mean they're always nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, NPK. And then down here you have nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, potassium, NPK. There's the K right there. Um, so it's 8% nitrogen, 3% phosphorus, and 9% potassium. You want this last number to be higher because that's the number that helps with flowering and fruiting. And this is good for all your tropical fruit, except I wouldn't use it on lychee or mangoes. Everything else, I think you can use this um, pretty well and, and you'd be fine with it. So NPK is right here. What I'm just showing you, don't worry too much about this confusing graph, but if you look at the bottom, this is the pH. So our pH, because we have limestone, is pretty high. It's up here about 7.8 to 8.3 maybe up here. So if you draw a line up, let's draw a line up from eight. And you see when these bars are skinny, that means it's difficult for these elements to get picked up because of the high pH. 
So things like iron, manganese, boron, copper, and zinc, which are minor elements, you would use that as a foliar spray and put that onto the leaves, or you would use them um, chelated and put them into the soil chelated. Chelated will help them navigate the high pH. So where do you put fertilizer? You put it out here in the drip line. So here's your tree, here's your drip line. You're gonna spread that fertilizer out here like that. So you walk around the tree and you throw out the fertilizer and you spread it out. So it's all throughout this area in the drip line because that's where your feeder roots are gonna be. Um, Katie mentions she uses a banana blend for her fertilizer, which is a six to 12 and it works too so far. I think that's a great mix, a six to 12. And Katie Chafin, I wonder why you would be using a banana blend. Mm. If anybody knows the Chafins, you know why. Um, so I wanted to, I found some kind of cool information in a, in a book that I wanted to give to you guys. So this is from the Plant Resources of Southeast Asia, Volume 2. I'm going to put on my reading glasses before we talk about pruning. And we're gonna talk about the, or I'm gonna to read to you the uses, many uses of, of the fruit. So the pulp of young fruit is cooked as a vegetable, pickled or canned in brine or curry. Pulp of ripe fruit is eaten fresh or made into various local delicacies. Um, the pulp is also used to flavor ice cream and beverages or made into jackfruit honey or reduced to a concentrate or powder and used for preparing drinks, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then the timber, wanted to read to you quickly about that. The timber is classified as a medium hardwood. Uh, I think it's a very soft wood. Uh, it's resistant to termite attack, fungal and bacteria decay, easy to season, takes polish beautifully. So it's not as strong as teak, but is considered superior to teak for furniture, construction, turnery, mass, oars, implements, and musical instruments. So that's kind of cool. Just wanted to give you that info there. And this picture is a lot of jackfruit and they're up really high. So we would want to not let our trees get this big because that's gonna be really difficult to, um, to get those fruit. Ellen has a question, uh, fertilized spring only? My municipality has regulated no fertilizing in the rainy season. Uh, rainy season is a great time to fertilize. If, you, if your municipality isn't allowing you to do that because they, they think that the fertilizer is gonna run off into the ocean or the bay, um, then you can do it in the spring but make sure you water ahead of time and you water after you fertilize. Okay, so pruning, these are the tools I use. I use a little hand pruner, I use a lopper, and I use a saw. <clears throat> I don't usually use a chainsaw to prune because you can really do yourself some, get into some trouble by cutting too much too quick. So here's what you don't want, although this is super cool. If I had this in my yard, I would definitely leave that there. Um, so here are some trees. These are, uh, look like seedlings because they're kind of straight up and down. So what I would do here is cut out the middles. I would cut out all the middles of these to get some height control and get them to go sideways. Uh, you can also do tipping. So here's a smaller tree that's been tipped and you can see the new growth coming out below from the tipping. Uh, and I do have a whole webinar on pruning. So if you want that, you can always email me and I can give you that. Um, I have webinars on now pruning, planting, all different types of propagation, one on the mango, one on the avocado, and then now we'll have this one on jackfruit. So here's something that you don't normally hear about, but it's a good thing to do. It's called spur pruning. So your old Fruit, your old flowers, your old male flowers and your old female flowers, if they don't set fruit and they're just sitting there, it's a good idea to come through and clean them all off. It's called spur pruning. So you take off these little things. 
because they're not going to flower again from that from that spur. So I take them all off. So that's a good thing to do. So here's one you can see this. It had a flower. It's bigger. It's not a branch. So you just come back and you take it out. Here's some old ones here that were taken out. Here's another little one. I would take that out. That allows them to flower a little better. So here's the tree I planted and for pruning what I did was I just took out the middle and I've only had to do that twice where I took out one of the, the, the vigorous um, verticals. So there's the cut I made. That's all I took out and that's controlled the height pretty well. Now I don't really do a lot of fertilizing or watering, which I should, but uh, we don't have irrigation here at the extension office. So um, it's, it's looking very healthy, but it's not growing very rapidly. Okay, so we're at the end here. Uh, so Tropical Fruit Tuesdays, we do have a few more coming up. Tropical Fruit with Attitude, Properly Growing Carambolas, and Fertilizing Tropical Fruit. We had a lot of good questions as we went, so I've answered most of those. Um, Muriel asked, what is the book you read? So the name of the book is uh, Plant Resources of Southeast Asia, Volume 2, Edible Fruits and Nuts. So that's the book. It might be backwards, but that's it right there. It's got a lot of good information. Um, other good books are the classic, Julia Morton, Fruits of Warm Climates. That's a classic. And of course, you want to have your EDIS. Like I said, that's a really good spot to get up-to-date information. Um, so, oh yeah, Jorge mentions the book, The Exotic Jackfruit, Growing the World's Largest Fruit by Dr. Richard Campbell and Dr. Noris Lepesma. I think I have that on my... I know I have that book. I think I have it at home. But that's a good one if you can get it. That's got really good information. It goes through the different cultivars uh, really well. Um, so, Montario, you're very welcome. So, guys, I think that's everything. So, I hope to see you in two weeks for Fruit Trees with Attitude. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming. If you need to get on my email list, uh, just email me. Here, uh, my email is here, sflhort at ufl.edu. So it's sflhort at ufl.edu. Um, and have a great rest of your week, everybody. Bye-bye.